Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. Quite some time ago I asked people to vote for what the next project should be and the winner came out to be a digital clock with these big 7 segment displays. I originally thought about using a regular microcontroller and then just hooking these up with multiplexing and some display drivers and maybe adding a Wi-Fi feature to that so that it could read my subscriber count or something from the internet and put it on the clock. But since I got that idea, a lot of other people have made similar stuff and posted on YouTube and they are quite good videos so I thought why not do something different. So I decided to go ahead and make an introduction series to FPGAs and VHDL and we can use that to make the digital clock. So first we'll take a look at what exactly FPGAs are and what we can use them for. Then we will take a look at how to write the programming code that we need to define the hardware that should be inside an FPGA. Then we will write a few different hardware blocks that can uh, substitute a function that we could think of a regular chip so you could make a clock using discrete chips if you have a, a clock reference, uh, an oscillator. Then you divide that down to provide, for instance, one cycle every one second. Then you use counter chips that will count up to 60 for the seconds and the minutes and 24 for the hours. Then you could take the signal from the counter chips and put them out to some BCD to 7 segment decoder chips and you could drive the displays. In theory we can do the same thing with the FPGA. We can write some blocks that will substitute the chips and we can connect them in VHDL just like connecting wires from one chip to another. And that way we can build up a whole clock using hardware components that we made ourselves and we can reuse them, the individual components, in other projects. So that's uh, kind of the structure that I hope to <laughs> be able to follow. In this series I'll be using the Altera FPGAs and their Quartus software. Uh, it just happens to be what I have. Uh, if I had Xilinx or Lattice I would probably have used that. There's no particular reason for me to choose Altera. I purchased this board over a year ago and as I remember it uh, they were a little bit cheaper, the Altera ones compared to the Silex. It might not be true these days and maybe not for the smaller boards either, but we'll take a look at that later when I try to give my two cents on which hardware you should get if you want to get into FPGAs. I started out buying this board which is <laughs> rather expensive uh, because I thought I needed a whole lot, but actually to be honest I haven't used any of the peripherals on this apart from the display and the seven segment displays yet. And I had this board for over a year as I said. And to be honest with you I didn't even use it for the first half year because I didn't have the time to to learn the VHDL language. At least I can say if I should have bought an Altera board to start out with now I would have gotten the DE0 board. Oh, there's a few different but one of them. I don't know if I mentioned but these boards are made by Terra ASIC and you can find them at their website. I have played around with a few Silinx FPGAs also and used their software. So we might take a look at that uh, at a later point in time if somebody is interested. But I don't have a Silinx FPGA board myself so I would either have to borrow one or purchase one somewhere. But as I said, at least for now we will stick with this. Well, now that I think about it, I do have a Silent CPLD board. CPLDs are like FPGAs, just usually much, much smaller and can implement a lot less hardware. I kind of forgot about this again because it, uh, it couldn't hold any of my projects. I could only do like a counter that could flash these LEDs. If I made a counter that was large enough to divide this down to a 
I think it was a half second clock on the first LED and then it would be one second, two seconds, four seconds, and eight seconds. The hardware just to do that would fill up 80% of this chip, I think, if I, if I remember correctly. And in this FPGA it would be like not even 0.1%. So I think now we will go to the computer and get the Quartus software installed and create our first project. And we won't be coding anything in this video, so if you're not interested in installing the software and creating the project, then you can just uh, stop the video now. There won't be anything else. Okay, so the first step before we can start playing around is to install the Altera Quartus 2 software. And we go to the download page from the Google link. And it automatically goes to the software selector and we take the newest version. In my case it's 15.1, but you might get a newer one. And the light edition is the free one. And we basically select everything. I mean, if you know you don't have to use a certain family, you could uncheck it, but depending on what it is, you, you're not really saving that much. And you have to create a free account. And I'm sorry this is in Danish, but it asks you to download the download manager. And you just wait till the download is finished and then we install it. So the download is finished and we can uh, start the install. In the beginning I think I called it Quartus 2 but it's actually Quartus Prime now. They updated it. On my laptop I have Quartus 2 so I don't hope they change the whole lot. So I have to hunt stuff down. <laughs> but there's only one way to find out. And we don't have a license key to the model sim, so we just use the free one. It will be sufficient for what we're doing anyway. And it's not a small program, so it, it takes a bit of time. Both to download and install. It is complete. And you want to make sure you select the launch USB blaster 2 driver installation because that hardware is included on the Terrasic board. So in order to program it, we need that. And what is happening here? I don't think I've seen that since uh, Windows 98. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't mind them sniffing around, so I'll allow that. And we'll just run the software. So this is uh, not running very good. Uh, I changed the screen resolution and the uh, DPI scaling, so uh, I'll just restart the computer. So it seems to work better now. And yeah, so they basically changed all the icons, but it's more or less the same, so I think I can manage. So I think we'll just start working and then we'll take things as they come along. So you can press 
new project wizard and next select where your files should be and uh, don't put them in the root folder of the program <laughs> Yes, we want to create it. And I think we should choose an empty project. If you have some existing files that you've made that you want to use in a project, you can also include those. And on this page, we have to select the device that we're using. It's in my case, it's a Cyclone 4E. And the easiest way I find is just to read the part number of the chip and put it in the filter. So it's an EP4 C115 F29 C7. There it is. Next. And I think all this will just leave as it is. You just want to make sure that the simulation says model sim Altera and the format is VHDL. You can also use uh, Verilog, but I don't know that language, so I can't help you there, unfortunately. <laughs> and you can verify your data. And you can see it created something for us here. It's it's not really anything yet. Uh, so we need to add some files. There used to be a file tab down here, but maybe it will appear. You can click new. Then we want a design file and it should be a VHDL file. Then you can press OK. And just save it. You can't do that until you put some text in, apparently. So I hope you find this new series interesting and if you do please give the video the thumbs up. And I do plan to continue this series if it is a success and do some more advanced projects once we have finished the clock. Then we can start doing some projects that would actually need an FPGA that couldn't be run on a regular processor. So this is it for this video and in the next one we'll take a brief look at what's inside the FPGA so we can understand what we are dealing with and then if we have time in the next video we'll start uh, writing some code and if not that will be in the video following the next one so until then see you